Welcome to Crazy Tech Lab, and today we can finally start reviewing B550 motherboards for AMD's Socket AM4 platform. And today I will be looking at the Gigabyte B550i Aorus Pro AX, which we've got here. And uh, as you can see, it's a mini ITX motherboard, so super interesting from that point of view. Will also be interesting to see how it compares to the X570 model, because like most B550 motherboards, they do have X570 counterparts, which are a little bit more expensive and uh, not that much more expensive in some cases as well. So quite interesting in terms of the pricing there from AMD. Uh, what we'll be doing today is just doing a, a roundup of the board's features, looking at some of the things that you get on the motherboard, the cooling, the VRMs, the ports, and that kind of stuff, whether, I, whether or not I think it's worth the cash. But before we do that, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to turn on the notifications so you will be told when I upload a video. I promise that the videos will be worth watching. And uh, basically, the more subscribers I have, the more videos I can do, the more time I can spend on my YouTube channel. And uh, basically, just having your support means a lot to me because it means that I'm doing something good, basically. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification icon to make sure that you're notified. So in terms of pricing then, what we're looking at is a price here in the UK at least of £185 for the B550i Aorus Pro AX and that compares to around £225 for the X570 version of Gigabyte's Mini ITX motherboard. So it's a reasonable price drop and if all you're after is PCI Express 4.0 support then in all honesty you might as well go for this motherboard over the X570 model because the, the X570 one doesn't really offer that many more features. Um, we will start, we will look at some of the other features later on in this video but if you don't need you know, things like USB 3.1 uh, header support um, and those kind of things, then really there's nothing wrong with this board over the X570 model. But let's take a look at those features in more detail. The board has eight direct power phases with six of those going to the CPU cores with 90 amp power stages. And that power circuitry is cooled by a huge extended heatsink that doubles as an IO shroud. That's also attached to the chipset and M.2 heatsinks using a heat pipe. That top side M.2 port is equipped with a heatsink, while the second port sits around the back of the PCB. The area also features a large backplate, which is largely there for protection, but does make thermal contact with the rear of the MOSFETs. One omission I spotted on the top side is the lack of a USB 3.1 header, so there's no support for cases with Type-C front panel ports, but most other things are here. Around the back you get quite a few video outputs, which may seem a little illogical given AMD only offers some poultry APUs at the moment, but once third gen Ryzen APUs arrive, things should be much more interesting, especially given the performance of the recent Ryzen 3 3300X. There's only five USB ports though around the back, which is the bare minimum as far as I'm concerned. And it's also worth noting that there are only three audio outputs for the Realtek ALC1220 audio. So for 7.1 channel speaker systems, you'll usually need to hook up the additional cables to your case's front panel audio ports. Lastly, there's a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and more interesting for those potentially picking up the motherboard in future when fourth gen Ryzen CPUs have landed is that the motherboard supports QFlash Plus, which is gigabytes equivalent of USB BIOS flashback. This allows you to update the BIOS to a more recent version, i.e. one that supports fourth gen Ryzen CPUs in future when they arrive without having to have a CPU in the socket. 
It's a very handy feature, although somewhat redundant at the moment seeing as support for those CPUs isn't needed because they haven't arrived. Now there is one issue with the motherboard, uh, specifically with the M.2 heatsink. Now I wasn't the biggest fan of the M.2 cooling arrangement on this board's big brother, the X570i Aorus Pro Wi-Fi. Uh, but here it seems that Gigabyte has slipped up once again because this large heatsink uh, which sits on top of the chipset and the, v and the M.2 heatsink isn't actually making any kind of thermal contact uh, with thermal pads. Um, at all, either with the chipset or the M.2 heatsink, and I think that's a bit of a missed opportunity here for Gigabyte because it's really easy to install, but if anything, the thermal transfer is going to be hindered by having this big slab of metal on the top, which isn't, make, which doesn't make contact with thermal pads. It just sits, you know, metal on metal, which is never going to be that that efficient, if I'm honest. So, first thing I would do if I own this board is basically get a thermal pad and just stick it underneath. Um, underneath on that big area down there so it makes contact with the M.2 heatsink and also along the edge here uh, where the screw where the screw ports are to actually make contact with the chipset heatsink underneath as well. So a bit of a missed opportunity with Gigabyte there and I'm a bit disappointed because the rest of the board is quite good and MS, uh, Gigabyte's uh, other boards are quite good here as well. Now space on a mini ITX motherboard is usually at a premium and uh, while there seems to be quite a few areas where Gigabyte might have added a third fan header, there are only two included as standard, um, it seems to have realised this kind of at the last minute and it's added a, uh, a, a like a small header which looks like it's just some kind of proprietary thing um, but actually it includes an adapter in the box and I'll just show you here where you can actually plug another fan header into this uh, into this connector here so if you pop it in just like so a bit stiff um, and there you have it you've actually got a third fan header into the mix there which just plugs into that into that small hole so it's a nice touch from gigabyte um, maybe seems a bit of an afterthought but at least you do actually have three fan headers there which means that you can control a pump your radiator fans and a couple of case fans off three fan headers Thank you. 